And it's that time of the year again. It's been a while since I last made a video comparing different types of controllers and how they perform when it comes to PC gaming. I've tested ones like the Xbox One controller, PS4 controller, the Steam controller, and other controllers that I included in the list. However, we've had some more releases as of recently, and definitely some new ones that we should check out and compare with some of the older ones. That said, I'm very excited to share my thoughts with you today. The best controller for PC gaming. Which one takes the cake? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by Fifine, the makers of some of the best audio gear on a great budget. Like the ones from their C1 models featuring a professional grade lavalier mic and the headset mics bundled together. Links to everything below. And before we move any further, I would like to give you guys a disclaimer. All of my tests are going to be based off of these six controllers that I've included here since those were the six I was able to gain access to. And I will also be testing them in genres such as 2.5D fighters, action RPGs, turn-based games, and first-person shooters. All of my thoughts here are going to be fully opinionated. One of these controllers might be the best one for you, but I will be choosing the one that I believe is overall the best one in those different categories, but also which one's better than the rest in general. And the first controller on the list is going to be the Xbox One controller. This controller is a very good one in my opinion. I really like the grips, the buttons layout, I like the feeling of the sticks, even if I don't love their positioning necessarily, I love the feeling of the triggers, and I overall believe this to be a very stylish controller that works very well and that has the best sort of support within Windows, which is very nice since, we'll, since we will be using a Windows system to test these controllers. Next up, we've got the DualShock 4. This controller is also very good. It's definitely considerably smaller than the Xboxes, and the layout is going to be different. Obviously, the grip style is going to be different. It's still pretty good. It's a little bit lighter than the Xbox One controller, so I suppose you could say it's a little bit easier to handle. The D-pad's different. The sticks are positioned in the way that I generally prefer. And you do get a little touchpad here, which is a little helpful for navigating around. Next up, we've got the Steam controller. This controller was made specifically for usage within Steam, so that is definitely where it performs its best. You've got so many options for configuring the Thing. And you can really get extremely detailed with how their controls work, in particular with the D-pad and the trackpad on the side, even though they both behave as trackpads. This controller does have the most unusual grip, but it is designed best to be held while being able to control the touchpads in the most comfortable way possible, since these grips, I would say, are accommodating those in particular. You've got two programmable buttons around the back as well, which is very useful. Next, we've got the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. This controller is a very good one, and the layout is going to be almost identical to the one of the Xboxes. However, there are a couple of key differences. The grip on this one is definitely smoother, so some people might prefer that. I'm personally torn between both grips, to be honest. I prefer the triggers on this controller. I really like the sticks on that as well. I strongly dislike the D-pad, but we will definitely get into that later. And a great feature of both this controller is that it's got USB-C, so that is always a great thing. It's a very comfortable controller to use overall. Next, we've got the Google Stadia controller. So this controller was released very recently along the Founders Edition of Google Stadia. I went ahead and purchased it, and if you're interested in a review for Google Stadia, I will be making sure to leave that linked in the description. However, the controller itself ended up being a lot better than I expected it to be. This controller is very nicely weighed, the buttons feel great, at least most of them do. The D-pad in particular is pretty nice, and the sticks feel awesome. I really like the texture on the back. It's just a really well-designed controller overall, in my opinion. Also, it's got USB-C, can't go wrong with that. Final controller is going to be the Razer Raiju Ultimate. So this is obviously the most expensive one in the box. This controller has a fantastic grip. Everything is just very premium. The buttons feel amazing. You've got fully mechanical buttons around the front and you've got an extra set of keys you can use this guy wired and wirelessly, whether it's on PC or on your PS4. This is probably the most expensive game controller that's not a fight stick that I can think of. So, there you go. And now to start off, I'd like to test out the action RPG of choice in this case, and that is going to be Final Fantasy XV. The first controller I decided to use was the Xbox One controller. This controller obviously performed very well. Right out of the bat, I didn't have to do any sort of setting up since Steam immediately knew that I connected an Xbox One controller and it was performing very nicely. The grip was very comfortable and nice while playing this type of game and the sticks were great as well. I didn't have to use the D-pad very much so I can't really speak on that but the thumbsticks were great, the triggers felt very nice and the buttons also felt pretty good. Can't complain very much about it. It's always been a great experience playing 
using this controller. Now, my experience with the PS4 controller was less than ideal, I would say. I don't like the PS4 controller for very action-packed games, if I'm completely honest. PS4 controller just feels a little bit small, and even though it does have a good grip, I don't feel like I'm in as much control as I, as I would be with an Xbox One controller, because the triggers are definitely softer on this guy. Same with the bumper buttons, you just don't get the same satisfying feedback that you would out of an Xbox One controller. This configuration just feels a little bit cramped for this sort of game, in my opinion, so I don't love the PS4 controller in this category. As for the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, this controller did perform pretty well, but I would say that it didn't perform as well as the Xbox One. Because here, you do have very good thumbsticks, and I do very much appreciate them. They're very grippy, and they feel very smooth when you're gliding around with them. The triggers were great, I really like those. The grip is also very good. Didn't have to use a D-pad very much. Again, it wasn't very necessary. However, I didn't necessarily love the feeling of the buttons in, in this category. They were pretty big, so they were easy to hit, but I just wasn't in love with the feeling, especially since I did have to spam a lot of these buttons very, very often. But it was still a pretty good experience, and I do wish they would bring this game to the Switch. Next up is going to be the Steam Controller, and I actually ended up enjoying this more than I did back when I tested this controller, in comparison to a lot of the ones on this list. After messing around with the right configuration, I didn't want to spend too much time on it, but I believe that I was fairly happy with the configuration that I had, even if it was still less than ideal in comparison to having actual physical analog sticks for getting the proper amount of feedback that I would want when it comes to a game like this. Nonetheless, it was still fairly enjoyable because the tracking on the right trackpad was actually very efficient, the camera moved very nicely, and it was definitely a lot easier after getting the right configuration for. I didn't have to use the D-pad very much, I just stuck around with the analog stick. I have to say that the fact that the buttons feel a little bit cramped around the center since you do have all of your main buttons here, it does feel a little bit cramped so it was a little bit uncomfortable playing a game like this. The triggers were still pretty nicely placed so I didn't have an issue with those. It was just that it felt a little bit cramped so the experience was slightly more uncomfortable than it would be with other controllers. So not really my favorite here either. Now for the Stadia controller, it was definitely a pretty good experience. Actually, getting very close to the experience of using an Xbox One because you have a very amazing grip, one that I, I really appreciate. I like the grip on this controller more than the one on the Xbox. The triggers are still very good even though the ones on the Xbox are better, which is what made the difference here, I actually prefer the sticks on the Stadia controller since they're a little bit more smooth. They don't have as much tension to them, so moving around just felt a little bit better. But the face buttons on the Xbox felt, which definitely helped things on the Xbox's end. It also doesn't help that you do have to manually configure the Stadia controller, even though that is just a very short process. Right after, you will be able to get into gaming, and if this is the controller that you have available to you, then you should be fairly happy with it. This is a very good controller, even in this genre. Lastly, it's going to be the Razer right here ultimate. Now, this controller does give you the most bells and whistles here, obviously, considering that you have things like programmable buttons or switch out any of the thumbsticks, but I never ended up doing that since this is my preferred combination in general. The fantastic tactile feel from the mechanical buttons on this controller made things a lot better. It was just a much nicer experience, and that's also thanks to the amazing grip and just how nice and hefty this controller is. So this controller easily destroys all other ones in this category in my opinion. First place goes to the Razer Raiju Ultimate, second place goes to the Xbox One controller, and third place goes to the Stadia controller. Now our next category is going to be for the first person shooter, and in this case we decided to test Destiny 2. We started our test with the Xbox One once more, this is going to be the same pattern all throughout. The Xbox One controller in this category obviously performed very well, again it is a very nice grip for the controller. It is best positioned so that you can reach the triggers the easiest out of any of the other controllers. It's just the most natural position in my opinion. The thumbsticks were great as well. The buttons, everything just felt really good about using this controller. I had a pretty fun experience using the Xbox One controller. Though the thumbsticks here maybe weren't necessarily my favorite. I, I do like the fact that they were concave. However, I didn't feel like I had as much control over the camera in this category like I would with other controllers. So that was a bit of a disappointment there. With the PS4 controller, it was a pretty similar experience in that regard. Again, in this case, the triggers weren't really all that satisfying, but it was fine. This controller was slightly easier to maneuver just because it was smaller. Again, I don't prefer the PS4 controller for action-packed games like this, but overall it did still perform pretty well. I can't really complain very much on this category since the buttons still felt pretty good. The thumbsticks were positioned exactly where I would want them, so I was very happy about that. And you still get a very good grip in this category. It's not ideal, it's less efficient than the Xbox One in my opinion, so I still can give it the win there. Next is going to be the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, and this controller gave me actually a very close experience to the Xbox One controller. It was almost as good. There's still things about this controller that I like more than on the Xbox. 
I prefer half stop for the triggers. For example, I prefer that in all genres of games and especially in shooters. So for shooting, this felt a lot better, but I did miss having concave sticks instead of convex, since concave sticks just make it so that your thumb has a better grip on the stick itself. It was a very similar experience, but that was something that could have helped here. For the Steam controller, in this category, I was very pleasantly surprised. When I initially reviewed this controller, I gave it a very bad rap. And you guys were right. I didn't really dedicate as much time as I should have setting it up. I made sure to spend enough time just getting the right setup for myself. I ended up having a really good experience using the Steam controller for shooting games. It was actually, everything just was positioned very well in my opinion. The triggers still felt great. They were still very easy to reach here. The grip was still pretty good considering that I was mostly interacting with the right trackpad. And by the way, panning around with it was extremely smooth. I was actually very happy about it. And using gyro which is something I did make sure to use this time around, also just changed everything. It made the experience of playing first person shooters just that much better. This controller performed very admirably here. If you're willing to spend the time customizing it, then this is a great tool, especially in this genre. Next up for the Stadia Pro controller, I like this controller more than the Xbox in this category, I have to say. Grip is just so much better, and these sticks have a little bit less tension on them, so they're just a lot easier to move around. Things just feel a lot smoother with the Stadia controller over the Xboxes, so I prefer this for first person shooters as well. Though I wouldn't say that it's a lot better than the Xbox, but it's noticeably better in my opinion. So I would prefer to use the Stata controller in this regard. And lastly, for the Razer Ranger Ultimate, again, you can readjust the sticks to really get the configuration that you would want. And I love this controller in this category. The grips are great. Having the extra buttons also helped a lot. And being able to replace the sticks for something that's better for shooting games also made things better. Also, just the fact that the front-facing buttons are mechanical for competitive use, I really like this controller. Because the Steam controller surprised me so much in this category, admittedly more accurate with the Steam controller in Destiny 2 or even CSGO, which is another game I tested here, the Steam controller gets to win here. Easily in first place is going to be the Steam controller, second place is going to be the Razer Raiju Ultimate, and the third place is going to be the Stadia controller. Next up, the following category is going to be on 2.5D fighters, and I decided to test Dragon Ball Fighters for this segment. For the Xbox One, you do get pretty good performance, but I actually didn't love it for this category. In this sort of games, I like using the D-pad. And admittedly, I really didn't like the placement of the D-pad, the very short click that you get from it for, it just felt clunkier, it was more uncomfortable to use. It was a nice grip, but overall just isn't the configuration I would prefer to use for fighting games. And this is where the PS4 controller dethrones the Xbox One fairly easily here. I actually much prefer the placement of the D-pad here and the contrast between the buttons, the main buttons that you will be using, the triggers and the D-pad. Just the placement felt right in this category. It was really good. For fighting games, I was very comfortable and I felt like I had a control over the match. So the PS4 definitely dethrones the Xbox One controller here. For the Switch Pro controller, this one also fails rather miserably. And the reasoning is because this one has the worst D-pad of the bunch. This D-pad is extremely stiff. And like I said, I really don't like using the thumbsticks for fighting games just because it doesn't give you that same level of accuracy that you would get. So unfortunately that ruined things for me. I don't like using the Pro Controller for fighting games. The Sadio Controller also didn't perform all that well. I do like the D-pad and I do like the placement of the buttons and just where everything is. However, I didn't like the feeling of the D-pad in this category just because I still felt like I was slowed down. I did not feel very efficient using this controller. Maybe it was just on the feeling of the buttons. Also, the triggers were maybe just a little bit too soft here. But yeah, I didn't love the Stadia controller here. For the Razer Raiju, you do get probably one of the best experiences here when it comes to fighting games. And this is definitely worth noting. You can replace this D-pad with a true D-pad, which is just the cross sign. But I do prefer to keep this configuration in general because I do much prefer the clickiness on this d-pad than I do on any other controller. Having the mechanical buttons is also fairly nice and the grip is pretty good but sometimes reaching for buttons can be a little bit obnoxious since you do have to do it on the fly especially in such a fast-paced fighting game like Dragon Ball Fighters. So even though I really like this controller in this category it's not my favorite. The Steam controller actually performed better than I was expecting as well. I did not like tapping to move at all using the trackpad slash d-pad on this controller so I just went straight into tapping it. And despite how stiff it is, I actually felt fairly efficient. Maybe it was just in the positioning of the button. I liked it quite a bit. I didn't hate it. Maybe that also has to do with the fact that I have been getting used to more to this controller overall. But I had a pre fairly decent experience and I wouldn't mind playing a couple of matches using the Steam controller here. Even if it's not the most ideal configuration, 
in my opinion. Number one is going to be the PlayStation 4 controller or the DualShock 4 controller. This one was just the most efficient one here. Second place is going to be for the Steam controller. And third place is going to be for the Razer Raiju Ultimate. And now as for the final category, we got turn-based games. And this is going to be the most relaxed type of games that I'm going to be including here. The Xbox One controller performs fine. I think it's okay. The D-pad is, again, does give you a fairly satisfying click. This category, you don't have to hurry around too much. And I do prefer to use the D-pad overall for this category for navigating through menus just because it's more precise. It was a pretty decent experience. Not too much to brag about here. The DualShock 4 controller did give me really good performance here, I would say. Just because it's the lightest controller in this list, the D-pad placements, everything is just best here. It's a more relaxing genre. Having a simpler controller to use in this case just makes for a much better gaming experience. The Switch Pro controller was fairly acceptable in this category but I hate this D-pad, I was not going to use it here. So I went back to the sticks and I still felt like I was getting pretty good precision out of these because these are a little bit stiffer than the rest of the sticks here for the exception of the Razer Raichu. So I still felt like I was getting more precision with this overall than I would with any of the other sticks on any of the other controllers. It was still a fairly decent experience. I don't have a problem using this controller for turn-based games, but the DualShock 4 controller does beat it handily there in my opinion. As for the Steam controller, this is easily my least favorite controller to use in this regard. I do prefer to use the tap to move around function, but this controller just feels a little bit too clunky. It's too big for this type of game and it kind of defeats the purpose of just having a simple sitting back and relaxing while trying to strategize. It's just a bit too much for a turn-based game. So I didn't like the Steam controller here at all. And honestly, same kind of goes for the Razer Raiju Ultimate. This is a very complicated controller with so many bells and whistles and easily the heaviest controller on this list as well. While I love this controller a lot, I love the feeling of the buttons. All of these things are completely unnecessary and even sort of hinder the experience actually of playing turn-based games in comparison to the rest. I still love it for this genre and in fact all of the genres of games, but this is not the most efficient one at all for turn-based games. It kind of takes away from the experience actually just because of how big it is. And then the Stadia controller is pretty good in this category. I actually really enjoyed the D-pad here. The placement was really good, very happy about it. The grip, everything just felt very nice. It's a hefty controller, sure, but not nearly as hefty as the Razer Raichu Ultimate. And it is just a little bit heavier than the PS4 or the Xbox One controller. I have to say that honestly, the Stadia controller wins in this category. I really appreciate the D-pad and just the overall placement of everything here. And a very close second is going to be the DualShock 4 controller, which is again, still a very nice experience for playing turn-based games. It's a simple streamlined experience. The last place is just going to be for the Xbox One controller. And so those were all of the tests I was going to perform for the day. And now I would like to be able to announce my favorite overall. As you might be able to tell, my favorite controller was still the Razer Raichu Ultimate. I believe that this is the most complete controller with the most bells and whistles. It's the most overkill one, which is something I generally really like, even if it's not ideal for all genres of game. And this time around, I will still say that if you're looking for the best all-purpose controller or one that would fulfill your purposes for the majority of genres of games, then I still vouch for the Xbox One controller as being the best one in that regard because it is a very good controller. So I do have to place this guy at number one because it is an affordable one. It still feels great. It's got probably the best build quality out of all of the ones that are within its price range, considering that this is a $60 controller. So a little bit cheaper than the Stadia controller and built better. So the number one place goes to the Xbox One controller overall. The number two place is going to go to the Razer Raiju Ultimate. This is the most expensive controller here. So it's obviously going to make the top of the list. From the mechanical buttons to the customization, this is just an amazing controller and I really love what Razer has done with it here. You guys will be surprised with this one, but I'm going to give the third place to the Steam controller. I know that a lot of you would have liked to see this controller at number one, but I just don't believe that, at least for me, it deserves the number one place. It misses a lot of things that, that the other controllers have that I prefer, like fully analog sticks, just a more comfortable grip overall, even if this controller actually performed pretty well in most of the genres once you tinker around with it. So I do believe it deserves a third place because it has the potential of being the best one for you. It just wasn't the best one for me. So it at least deserves to be in the middle. Then after that, I would actually put the State of Pro Controller at fourth place just because of how nicely built it is. And I do really like the grip and just how it feels overall. Then the PS4 controller, just for being more streamlined, for being a better option than, than the one that comes behind it. Even though 
it's not very far behind any of the other controllers that I mentioned. It's just by this much that it's behind it, in my opinion. And then lastly, the worst controller is going to be the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. I really like this controller. I think it's great for the Switch, but it's the least efficient one, in my opinion, for PC gaming. So there's that. And while that was the conclusion of the best controller for PC gaming, if you're interested in purchasing any of these controllers, and I will be making sure to leave affiliate links in the description to Amazon. If you use our links to make a purchase, and we do get a small commission that does helps us run things a little bit more smoothly around here. So we'd very much appreciate that. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.